Welcome to On Security. Conversations with the world's leading security technologists. I think you know the number one thing is just do something. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, software organizations that uh, the management just thinks that somehow the developers and the QA people just know something about security and it's just going to happen. Um, and that that just isn't true. You need to have some sort of process in place. It's it's almost like you know wish just wishful thinking that I'm not going to have any security problems. So there's a real disconnect, I think, a lot of times between what people, uh, management thinks the development team is capable of um, and uh, what, they real, what they really are. So um, having some sort of security process in place, um, just anything, will help you start to understand and measure, measure what you're doing. So, um, you know, the best way to do it and the cheapest way to do it is to, is to use a tool or to use a service like my company does to just do something, right? So send us your binary and we'll give you a report on your security and you can start going from, from there. Um, beyond that, I think it's just, just have some sort of some, some, uh, some security quality bar that you set, even if it's low, that you do some sort of testing and make sure you, you've crossed some hurdle. It's like so maybe it's just you know get rid of buffer overflows or if you're a web app just get rid of you know cross-site scripting you know just set a bar somewhere and start start there as opposed to just doing nothing and ignoring the problem I think that uh, you know it one way it imp imp I've seen it impact is um, Lower, lower support costs, so there's lo like lower, lower headaches. Um, and when you're, when you're selling your software to other people who load it, like say you're selling it to a manufacturer who's going to load it on their computer, um, they will, they take that into account. So um, they want, they want less headaches from their customers. They don't want their customers calling and saying, "I'm getting all these pop-ups. I don't understand what it is." I mean, that costs real money. So I, I think the biggest the direct cost that people who are shipping insecure software see is those support costs and I've seen those go down. I think that one of the hot areas is uh, in, in web development. Um, there's this whole software as a service uh, where people are building these really rich applications on the web. and. Um, I'm kind of wary of this whole bag of technology of, the, of a lot of rich JavaScript and web services on the server side and, and mashing up lots of things to get, together, mashing up um, a lot of different web services. Some of them you've written, some of them other people have written. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware, I, I, I think that there's a huge, this is a scenario where I go back to what I was saying before, is we're leaping into this using all these different types of technology and stitching them together in a way with really un not understanding what, what's the security implications of it. So that I always look to, to what is the newest, hottest thing and say that's going to be the place where all the vulnerabilities are going to be, new classes of vulnerabilities, new ways of attacking things. So um, if I was building applications like that, I'd be very wary of, uh, of security. And actually, my company is building an application like that um, because we do operate a software as a service platform, and uh, we're very wary about uh, about the problems along those lines. The whole Web 2.0, um, you know, phenomenon is really changing where the vulnerabilities are and changing the dynamics of um, how they occur, how they get fixed. Who finds them? How do you report on one? It's a really, it's a whole new um, world. Uh, I did um, some work about uh, five years ago on vulnerability disclosure. Uh, wrote a, a draft for um, the IETF uh, with Steve Christie from MITRE about how can people do vulnerability disclosure in a um, in a responsible way. 
um, because I think uh, vulnerability research is important. I think that, especially for the, 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 the you know, the case of we're going to just start using this technology without understanding the implications of it. Well, unless there are actually independent vulnerability researchers looking at uh, the vulnerabilities from using different kinds of technology, only the attackers are going to know. You just can't rely on you know the vendors to be doing this. Um, so I think vulnerability is important to you know the whole have the whole field of security uh, progress. Um, one of the problems with Web 2.0 is it really makes vulnerability research impossible, both practically and legally. Because practically, to do the best vulnerability research, you have it running on your machine, and you can put a whole suite of tools to bear on it, um, debuggers, um, and you have absolute control over the environment. It's like putting it, in, it's like putting it under a microscope in a lab. Um, that's the best way to study it, is control the environment. Um, with Web 2.0, the software is running on someone else's machine. You don't have access to that machine, so you can't use those intrusive tools to, um, to really instrument things. So uh, right away, vulnerability research is at a big disadvantage there. Um, but secondly, and this is sort of the showstopper, is legally, um, how do I even test that application? Can I just start, you know, I, uh, I'm interested in finding vulnerabilities in Gmail because I'm interested in finding vulnerabilities in these Web 2.0 applications written by the late, with the latest and greatest, um, you know, types of features that uh, some of these Google apps have. I can't just start, you know, firing packets at, you know, the Gmail web server and start, you know, sending attacks to that and trying out different attacks. You know, that's illegal. I don't, I don't. That's against the, obviously it's against some sort of uh, terms of service to um, start attacking their application. So legally, there's a problem there. And that one of my fears is we're going to enter into a, uh, a phase um, where there is no independent security researcher anymore for a lot of the new technologies, a lot of the new important technologies. Um, so I think that will cause um, you know, the field of security research to suffer. But I also think it, it eliminates um, one of the sort of the checks and balances that keeps vendors from having really poor quality software is because that security researcher is also a customer, right? They are pulling down the eval version or they're actually, they, they own the software and they're, you know, they're testing it. They're, they're acting as that consumer. And it just so happens that they have an expertise and then they can publish that expertise and they can become like a consumer reports type of uh, outlet where they're giving information that everyone can use to evaluate something. Um, if that goes away, how am I going to know that you know the data I'm putting up into you know company X's website, they've done their security testing themselves, and it's not just going to get stolen or manipulated. Um, there's really no way for me to know that. So um, I think we need to come up as an industry with a solution um, for that problem. And one of the things I've come up with is. Um, the, the people who are doing these software as a service um, type websites have to um, publish um, the results of a security, an independent security review that they've had done on their website. So um, to just show proof that they, they did their security due diligence, you know, they are encrypting your data. They have removed common vulnerabilities like SQL injection. Um, and uh, that way, um, people can feel comfortable, you know, using that website and putting their data into that website. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.